Hello, welcome to our new song. We will be looking at the song, O Worship the King. A short, simple little song, but man, it has a lot for us to look at. So the first thing we're going to look at for this time is the word king. Where do we get this idea that God is king? Well, it's mentioned a bunch of times, but we're going to look specifically at Psalm chapter 47, verses 6 and 7. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. And that psalm even goes further into the idea that God is king, how he reigns over everyone. But we can see it right there. God is king. He is king over everybody. And we are to sing praises to him. We are to worship him. So let's go ahead and do that with our voices. Okay, welcome to our Sunday school lesson. So today we're going to be in John chapter 6, where Jesus miraculously feeds 5,000 people. So we'll be in John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Our central truth today is that Jesus is in fact the Messiah who Moses spoke about. And our key verse today will be verse 14. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. And we'll, we'll get a chance to look at that verse a couple more times. But first, let's look at our passage. We'll read through it together, and then we'll see what it, what it has for us today. So let's turn to John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Now, real quick, because our verse starts with after this, let's look just before that at what had just happened. So Jesus had been teaching just before this, this passage takes place, and it's important to see just what he finished with. So he had been teaching, and, and he'd been specifically talking to some of the Pharisees, some of the people who knew God's law really well and had been, had been confused about Jesus because they didn't feel like Jesus, they didn't think that Jesus was um, teaching what Moses had taught. And Jesus said, uh, on the contrary, how can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your hope. So they were actually, they were actually putting more faith in Moses than God, and they were failing to see that Moses was supposed to be pointing them to God. They were following Moses but not what Moses was pointing to. And that's important for today's passage. He said, um, Moses, on whom you've set your hope, verse 46, for if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So that's how our passage starts today, is Jesus had just been teaching them about how um, they, they weren't understanding what Moses was pointing to quite right. So now let's look at chapter 6. After this, after he taught them about that, chapter 6, verse 1, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes, then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread, so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, 
there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who's to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word to us today, and we pray that you will uh, open our ears and open our eyes to understand your word and what it teaches us about Jesus, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. So today, I want to look at five truths, five, five things that we can learn about Jesus and what he's done for us just through this passage. So we're going to look at five different things to, to know about this passage in particular. And the first one is really just, just what happened. It's the facts of the story. And the first truth is that Jesus has the power to create food. He has this power. Jesus shows in chapter 6, verses 1 through 15, that he has, that he has power, that he has more power than just a, than a human. You and I can't make food uh, just appear out of, out of nothing. And yet uh, the facts of this story are that Jesus, all, all Jesus had was a, a little boy's lunch. It was five loaves that probably would have been pretty small. Not, not like we think of loaves in the store, but just uh, maybe like biscuits, little, little loaves that would have been his lunch or his food for the day. And he had two small fish. And, and so this little boy probably could have eaten that for, for, the, for his food for the day. And yet Jesus, when he breaks it and breaks it and breaks it over and over again and distributes it to the people, it becomes enough food to feed 5,000 men. Now, some people will look at this passage and they'll, they'll uh, try to think about how many people may have been there because the passage says there were 5,000 men. So how many kids might have been there? How many women might have been there? We don't really know. And, and really, the passage demonstrates a miracle either way. Even if it's only 5,000 men, uh, Jesus took one lunch and 5,000 people had their fill and there were 12 basketfuls left over. Jesus has the power of God. Jesus is God and he has this power to, to multiply food, to create food out of, out of nothing. Jesus can do that. So that's our first truth just from what happens in this story. Jesus demonstrates through this miracle that he has real power. The second that that leads from that is that Jesus is the prophet whom Moses told about, whom Moses foretold. In Deuteronomy 18.15, God promised that he would raise up another prophet like Moses and, and the people, the Jewish people had been waiting for another prophet like Moses. And yet here Jesus shows that in some ways he's like Moses. He is fulfilling that promise, but he's much more. He's much greater than Moses. This is a greater promise. So they had been waiting for someone to save them. Um, they'd been waiting for someone who would do what Moses did like in the desert. So if you remember when Israel was wandering in the desert because they had disobeyed God and they hadn't been, they hadn't trusted God and God punished them that they would just wander in the desert for 40 years. Well, God used Moses to, to lead them and God gave them bread in the desert. And Moses didn't make the bread appear, but he was their leader at that time. But the bread came from God. God brought manna down from heaven. So when they woke up in the morning, there was bread. There were these little crusts of bread on the ground and they could collect up what they needed for the day. And that's how God took care of them. And so here in this passage, when Jesus made bread, it reminded these people of their history. 
uh, in the desert. It reminded them, oh, God makes bread to feed us. And, and so this is maybe fulfilling that promise. Back in Ezekiel chapter 34, so another prophet who came long after Moses, but long before Jesus, Ezekiel uh, prophesied that, that God would come and take care of his people in this way. God was telling Israel's leaders that they hadn't done a good job taking care of his sheep, but that one day God would come himself and would take care of his his sheep, his people. He would he would gather them in and he would take care of them and heal them when they got hurt and he would lead them to good pasture. He would make them lie down on green grass and he would give them food. God himself would would take care of them, would bring them in, give them good grazing land and draw them to himself and care for them. This leads to our next point. So not only is Jesus uh, the promised prophet that would come after Moses. But Jesus is, is not just a prophet. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And Ezekiel 34 kind of hints at that because God says, my, my shepherds, the people that I put in charge of Israel, haven't done a good job. Now I'm going to come and be their shepherd and I will gather them in and I will take care of them and I will feed them. I will be their shepherd. So God says later, first he says, I will send another prophet like Moses. But when I do, he says through Ezekiel, when I do send that prophet, it'll be me. I will come and take care of my people. And when Jesus comes, he's fulfilling that prophecy. He is God and he will take care of his people. Jesus is not just a prophet like Moses. He's God. And so this brings us to some, some more of maybe what we should do and how we should think about God uh, in, in relation to this passage. So our fourth point is that we need to honor Jesus as our Messiah and as God. Our Messiah, our Savior, is God. Now This, this is a difficult truth, but the Bible uh, affirms that it is true. Jesus came as a man to save us, um, but he, he, he is also God. And that's part of why he saves us, how he saves us. Because, because God came as a man, then when he dies on the cross, he can save all of us. He can save everyone that he came to save through his death because he's, because he's God. Because he's, he, he lived a sinless life. He's our perfect sacrifice. And when he died on the cross... He, he atoned, he paid for all the sin of everyone he came to save. So this is, this is amazing truth that Jesus is, is God and that God came. God came to save his people. God says no other person could do it. No other human being could draw my people in and rescue them. No other shepherd could do it. Not even David, my beloved king who is a man after my own heart not even david could do it could change people's hearts but god sent his son to come and die for us in our place to save us and we see because of what jesus did in in john chapter 6 is is just one more example one more miracle that shows that jesus is who he said he is and he is god because jesus is god We can thank him for saving us on the cross when we believe in him. And we can worship him. We can worship Jesus because he's God for all of his wonderful works that he's done. All these amazing signs that he's done. Jesus is God. So we honor Jesus as both our Savior and our God. We worship him. And a a final point here that we can see out of John chapter 6, and especially out of the way that people responded to this miracle afterward is that we need to we need to desire Jesus more than we desire food. And that sounds a little silly. Of course we should love Jesus more than food. But you notice when when Jesus made food for people, when he performed this miracle, a lot of people kept following him because they wanted more food. And later, uh, when Jesus starts teaching him and teaching them again, they they keep asking about bread. 
And it's a little bit awkward because they ask him, well, what about bread? What about, uh, what about feeding us? What about before? And they're, they're kind of hinting that they'd like him to make them lunch again. And Jesus, Jesus tells them, this is much more important than bread. And you need to, you need to come after me um, because of, because of what, I, what I'll do for you. Because I'm, I'm not just here to give you bread. I am the bread of life, Jesus will say later. So it's important that, that, that we see Jesus not just as someone who gives good gifts, even though he does, but uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you've had a birthday recently or, or you're looking ahead at, at, at Christmas and you think about gift giving. When someone gives you a gift, of course, we appreciate the gift and, and you can be happy about the gift. But, but who do you thank? Do you thank the gift? Of course not. That's, that's a little bit absurd. We don't thank the gift. You thank the person who gave it, don't you? And you, you show your appreciation to the person, not to the gift. And that's a little bit of, of what we need to learn from a passage like this. Jesus gives us great blessings and he gives us great things. He gives good gifts. Uh, but, but our affection should always be for Jesus. We always want to turn our hearts to Jesus because he's good. And he is better than even than, than the gifts that, that he gives. Jesus is the source of life. He is the source of all goodness and light. So we need, to, we need to thank Jesus for who he is. And we need to desire Jesus even more than, the, than the, the blessings and the good gifts that he gives to those who follow him. So uh, to close, we've got five, five truths that, that Jesus has power, that Jesus has the power of God. He has the power to create food, for example. He, he, he is the prophet that Moses told Israel uh, would come. He is the promised prophet. And yet he's more than just a prophet because Jesus is God. So when God promised that he would come to save his people, uh, he, he, he really did. And he was, Jesus came on the earth and is both man and God. Therefore, Point four, we, we honor Jesus. We honor Jesus as both our Savior and our God. We can worship him because he's God. And finally, we need to desire him even more than, than the, the good gifts that, that he promises. We need to desire Jesus uh, for who he is and because of what he's done for us. So in John 6, Jesus shows us that he is the Messiah by performing this powerful miracle. He also shows that he's God fulfilling God's promise to shepherd and to feed his people. And so our memory verse for the week is John 6, 14. When people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. John 6, 14. When people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. John 6, 14. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are glorious and you are righteous, and we praise you for your mighty deeds and your wonderful word to us. We thank you for your promise to save us, spoken ages ago by prophets like Moses and Ezekiel. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to shepherd your lost people, to comfort and guide us, and ultimately to die for our sins so that by trusting in him, we can have life with you. We thank you for raising him from the dead so that death is defeated and we can hope to live with you forever. Help us today not to worry about things like bread or to only love you for your gifts, but rather help us to seek after you with our whole heart because you are our God and your purposes are good. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, that's all for today. We'll see you next time.